Breaking down USC football here at the Voice of College Football. We got Matt Zemick on the line as we do each and every week uh, from Trojans Wire. Got to check out his work on Trojans Wire. Keep up with USC and a lot of happenings there with spring ball headed our way. Matt, how you doing today? Doing well, Mark. Happy March. Yes, we are finally into March. And for those of you who do not live in Arizona but live in the Northeast or somewhere in the country where it's icy and cold, yes, um, those are those are good words when you talk about spring because there's a disconnect with spring right now. But uh, we hope to get there in a few weeks. All right. Um, the, the term analyst in the coaching ranks has become the norm in recent years. It was something unheard of not that long ago, but um, these big programs looking for any edge they can get in uh, watching game film, developing the players, and uh, USC and Lincoln Riley. Uh, and, of course, it's a USC fans' hopes that Lincoln Riley will uh, reemerge the program in the form of uh, Pete Carroll dominance. And um, so Riley's going to a Pete Carroll connection to help uh, Caleb Williams. Yeah, so Pete Thamel of uh, now of ESPN, almost said Yahoo, now with ESPN, he reported late last week that USC is expected to hire Will Harriger uh, as uh, an offensive analyst to help with the development of Caleb Williams at quarterback. Now, this this uh, hiring is not yet official, but it's expected to happen. And so the main news here is that, you know, Caleb Williams family, they made it a point. This is also something Thamel uh, reported late last week that the Caleb Williams family wanted NFL quality, NFL caliber development for the, for their son. And so this is Lincoln Riley's attempt to continue to deliver on that, to build it, to enhance it. And uh, if you look at Will Harriger's uh, resume, uh, assuming that he is on boarded at USC, it's a fascinating career and it's not really a, a typical career or it's le- or at least it's not the kind of career you hear about very often In coaching, he hasn't been the actual lead position coach uh, at his various NFL stops with the Seahawks under Pete Carroll and then with the Atlanta Falcons and then most recently with the Jacksonville Jaguars, um, which he was on Urban Meyer's offensive staff, helping Trevor Lawrence and also the wide receivers. He hasn't been the lead quarterback coach. He's been assistant quarterback coach. It's with the Falcons. He was the game management coordinator. Uh, and so he's always been like an assistant to the assistants. So not a high profile career. And yet you look at the fact that after he spent several years under Pete Carroll, the Falcons wanted him, uh, you know, and that would probably go to Dan Quinn when he was there, you know, Dan Quinn won the Super Bowl with Pete Carroll and the Seahawks. So when then he established his roots, uh, as the head guy in Atlanta, well, so he knew Harriger. From that, but then uh, then uh, Harriger landed with Urban Meyer's staff on the Jaguars. So obviously, if you have Pete Carroll and Dan Quinn and Urban Meyer all looking for your services, you must be doing something right. Like it's it, it must be a little bit more than just knowing how to uh, fill out a resume, knowing how to interview well. Like you 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 can't fake it, right? You, working with Russell Wilson, working with Matt Ryan. Working with Trevor Lawrence, I mean, if you're if you're hopping to those kinds of assignments, you're obviously doing something right. So Lincoln Riley, looking at the this vast universe of not just assistant coaches and coordinators, but also in Harriger's case, assistants to the assistants, to to land on Harriger and think that ah, that's a guy who can help Caleb Williams develop. I mean, first off, it's just an intriguing story. But secondly, Mark, the other point is Lincoln Riley is continuing to make decisions at USC, which project the very crucial idea that he doesn't think he personally has all the answers. Like he wants to surround himself with more voices, more input, more consultation. Like he, Riley is not relying solely on himself to see everything and discern everything. And that's that's the mark of a mature leader. Now, we've had discussions over the past few months, Mark, in which Lincoln Riley was acting a little bit careless. Uh, you know, he was doing things, saying things that he didn't really have to say. Uh, but in this case, the, like, like this looks like a very mature move. 
Let's surround myself with more input. Let's surround myself uh, with more perspectives so that we really drill deep and make sure that Caleb Williams becomes a fully polished NFL caliber player by the time he leaves USC. And of course, this is in service of making the college football playoff and competing for a national title. But set that aside for a moment. If Caleb Williams becomes an elite NFL player, that is a huge selling point for USC in a long-term context. You have Malachi Nelson coming down the pipeline pretty soon after that. So like, there's an investment beyond the on-field results, getting Caleb Williams you know, as a number one pick, giving him the springboard toward an excellent NFL career. Like, you know, Lincoln Riley is going to be at USC. This is where he's planted his flag. This is where he's going to expect to coach for the next decade or so. So if he if Caleb Williams is crushing it in the NFL come 2024, 2025, that's just a major catapult for USC to continue to grow and to continue to lock up the very best quarterback prospects. So Lincoln Riley is making a, a very conscious long term investment with this. You know, very interesting, subtle hire of Will Harriger, um, the assistant to the assistants. As you note here, uh, it's going to be an analyst job that is going to be played out on the field on Saturdays, which to me speaks less of X's and O's strategy and more of mentoring on the sideline and more of an individual approach uh, to help Caleb Williams. Absolutely. I, th I think this is going to be a lot about technique, a lot about understanding, a lot about the film room, a lot about how you carry yourself, how you comport yourself uh, as well as an elite college athlete, but eventually giving him a professional mindset that that's definitely what this is about. And, you know, like, <laughs> you know, that Will Harriger is going to tell stories, not just about Pete Carroll, but about Russell Wilson, how he went about his business. He's a, he, he can say the same thing about Matt Ryan. You know, this is how these guys did it. I'm sure that Caleb Williams is going to get from Will Harriger a lot of Russell Wilson and Matt Ryan film. And the fact that Russell Wilson and Matt Ryan are different kinds of quarterbacks, you know, Caleb Wilson can get the running piece, the the scrambling piece from Russell Wilson. He can get the stand in the pocket, survey the field, uh, dimension from Matt Ryan like so there's a lot that Will Harriger is in position to pass on to Caleb Williams and you know he's going to have a very ready willing and eager student someone who's very coachable someone who wants to soak up all this knowledge and and you know I go back to Famel's reportage that Caleb Williams family wanted NFL style development so I I think that you know the the specific wisdom of hiring this guy Will Harriger it's because if you've taught Russell Wilson and Matt Ryan, you, you have so much to draw on. You're not going along one track or you're not in one narrow silo or bucket. You have two very different styles of quarterbacking and Caleb Williams can soak up all of this like a sponge and he can take what's best from these different quarterback trees and put it all together. And of course he is a dual threat quarterback. So like he's going to use his legs. He's going to use his arm. He needs to ma master how to uh, improvise, but he also needs to master how to stay in the pocket at times. So you can just see when you look, when you sift through the details of Will Harriger's resume and what he's done in the NFL over several years, you can begin to see why this makes philosophical structural sense for Lincoln Riley at USC. And to extend on that point, and not just those two tracks, but as you mentioned, the most recent track was with uh, mentoring Trevor Lawrence. So that's an addition where it could be argued by the pessimist. Well, Russell Wilson and Matt Ryan had it figured out. They didn't need anyone. They were true pros. Well, Trevor Lawrence has yet to arrive in the NFL, but he has survived a season and Harriger has that experience of working with a young athlete who's still trying to figure things out at that level. And he's obviously was able to relate. It appears with somebody uh, of a younger status. 
and also a, a rookie, you know, but being able to walk with someone in a, in a brand new situation. Now, of course, Harriger was working primarily with the receivers, but of course that obviously in Jacksonville, but that obviously involved a lot of input and conversations with Lawrence in terms of, again, building a rapport with his wide receivers on the Jaguars. But Harriger, because of that experience, like it, that, that's his work with a less proven quarterback and give him the confidence to stand on his own and be a leader. And and Harriger, just personally, without so much how he's going to relate to Caleb Williams, uh, Harriger also just has the fact that, you know, Trevor Lawrence's season didn't go well. He also saw how few resources Trevor Lawrence uh, was given by Urban Meyer and how dysfunctional a situation that was. So, I mean, the work with Russell Wilson, that was obviously a period of success and prosperity. Um, but the, the period with Trevor Lawrence, it might be it might benefit USC less because of what Harriger is able to impart to Caleb Williams. But specifically in terms of just the Jaguars piece of this, Mark, Harriger could become a better coach by learning from the failure and the dysfunction that surrounded him and Trevor Lawrence. Like this wasn't Harriger's main responsibility it didn't fall to him to lead trevor lawrence or to lead the jaguars offense again he he has this lower uh place in the larger uh coaching staff on the jaguars just as he's had a lower place on each of the nfl staffs he's been on but for harriger to see that dysfunction uh you know from his lower place on the jaguars staff i mean failure is part of how you learn and so Harriger's background having success in Seattle under Pete Carroll, but also having failure in Jacksonville under Urban Meyer, it's probably going to make him a better, more well-rounded coach who can be honest with Caleb Williams. And he can tell him, you know, this is how things go when they're going wrong. This is what a, a dysfunctional situation looks like. This is what Trevor Lawrence didn't have. This is why I'm going to give to you, you know, what, what I wasn't able to give Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville because of how badly that larger situation was managed by Urban Meyer. So that that pinch of failure that's also part of Will Harriger's uh, NFL coaching history, it's going to make him a better coach for Caleb Williams at USC. Matt Zemick, Trojans Wire, breaking down USC football for us. Matt, we always appreciate the conversation. Always enjoy being on here, Mark. Have a great week.